Hey there, Rednecks, Preppies, Redneck Preppies. It's me, the Redneck Preppy. How you doing today? Great, good. Probably not a surprise, but as a military surplus collector and owner of a Type 38 Arasaka, a rifle used by the Imperial Japanese Army during World War I and II, I get asked a lot about markings on Japanese rifles, particularly the chrysanthemum, or mum as it's generally referred to. People want to know two things most often. What is the mum, and why are so many of them defaced or missing? I suppose we can start with the easy one first. What is the mum? Most military rifles typically have a number of markings. You'll find proof marks, year and arsenal of manufacture, caliber markings, the usual stuff. You'll also find, often, the mark of the country that the rifle was issued by. The mum is that last one, but more. The mum obviously means that it was a firearm issued by the Empire of Japan, but it also carries a far deeper meaning as it was the symbol of the Emperor of Japan. Without getting too deep into the weeds of the role of the Emperor in Japanese society, it was generally held that he was divine, a living god. So the mum effectively told the firearm's bearer that what he was carrying belonged to a god. It goes without saying that the symbol itself was sacred. Now let's fast forward to the end of the war. After the Japanese surrendered on August 15th, 1945, the emperor was still viewed as a deity, at least until January 1946 when Hirohito renounced that divinity and that of Japanese emperors in general. Until then, regardless of what a signed piece of paper said, however, few people accepted anything other than that divinity actually existing. And that left the question of the chrysanthemum symbol on the rifle. Given that both individually and collectively, Japanese soldiers weren't keen on surrender, and even less so fans of disgracing their still-at-that-point-living-god ruler, the idea of handing over firearms that belonged to him and carried his personal mark wasn't popular. So then, what was to be done with the chrysanthemum mark? The decision was made that Any rifle handed in to authorities, including those being taken as war souvenirs by Allied soldiers, was to have its mum defaced. A defaced mum ended its sacred status, and the Emperor was spared having his property captured as a war prize. Now, we typically see a few different ways that the chrysanthemum mark was defaced. The mum could be completely ground off. The mum was crossed out typically with two marks, as you see in this example. The mum could have a series of small circles stamped around its circumference. And finally, the mum could just be stamped out. Now, that's not an exhaustive list how the mums could be defaced. The process appears to have been pretty ad hoc at points, with different people doing the defacing in different ways at different times. That then leads us to the next question. Who did the defacing? Well, here's where the story gets a little more complicated and hazy. Depending on who you ask, or which story you choose to believe, either the Japanese defaced the mums before they handed in their rifles, or the Americans had the mums defaced afterwards under orders from General Douglas MacArthur to help the Japanese and their emperor save face, or both A and B. Even with that uncertainty, there are those who state that you can tell who defaced which rifle by how the mums were defaced. Is that true? Like most questions of history, the truth is somewhere within some fairly wide margins. Let's take a look at each method of defacement. When it comes to the ground-off mums, I've read accounts, none of them truly substantiated, mind you, that it was American commanders that ordered soldiers and it depends on the account, uh, whether it was both Americans and Japanese servicemen or just Americans alone who did it, that soon after the war to grind off all the mums uh, from captured weapons. The higher-ups had no problems with American soldiers taking home souvenirs. It was really just a bit of paperwork if a soldier followed procedure. But any such rifle had to have the mum ground off. It's probable that ground-off mums were part of an organized effort. And for the record, that also uh, 
carries over to any firearms that were not taken as souvenirs, but rather collected by the Americans and then just dumped into Tokyo Harbor. Those mums were ground off as well. Now, according to an essay in the Military Rifle Journal back in February 2001, it appears that it was the Japanese who were responsible for the cross-mark defacement. According to an American pilot on the Intrepid, who was present when the rifles were being defaced, I remember seeing Japanese civilians using triangular-shaped files to mark crosswise to the barrel and defacing the cherry blossom symbol. We were told that this was the only way that the Japanese had agreed to surrender the rifles to the United States and then to be used as souvenirs of war. I was told that they believed that this disfiguring of the symbol would destroy any special religious or power specifically provided by the gods of war. Every rifle which was dispersed aboard the carrier had to be defaced in this manner. Carrying on, my research suggests that the rifles with these small ring of circles, and you generally find these on Type 38 Arasakas, indicates that they were sold out of service or transferred to training schools. According to Duncan McCollum's Japanese Rifles of World War II, those rifles were either overstamped with the Koishikawa slash Kokura arsenal mark, or that ring of small circles to indicate that they no longer belonged to the Imperial Japanese Army. So those rifles were likely sold off to either other countries or sent to training schools. Finally, for the crudely stamped out defacement, I have to believe that this was an in-the-field or ad hoc defacement method by the Japanese. While it is possible that individual American soldiers might have done this in order to satisfy a souvenir rifle's defacement before being taken home, I think it would have been easier for them just to have it ground off officially rather than some field expedient defacement. That said, I've found nothing to indicate who or when this defacing was performed. Back to the question of who is responsible. Here's the reality. We don't actually know who defaced any given mum, whether it was due to an organized effort by the Japanese, the Americans, both in concert or individuals acting collectively, other than perhaps the ring of small circle defacements. If there are records of orders from the American side, they're either lost or were unofficial, that word in giant quotation marks. If it was the Japanese, they were likely motivated by the emperor not losing face, so they didn't need formal orders from the top. We can't even prove that MacArthur issued any order for defacing, as has been popularly reported for decades, as no document has ever surfaced despite some pretty intensive searching. Now, it can be argued as well that the defacement was also, at least in part, an organized by Japanese soldiers. According to the book, Imperial Japanese Grenades, Rifles and Launchers, an account by American Don Roberts states, We arrived in Sapporo about noon, October the 5th, 1945, at the provincial headquarters. There appeared to be two to three hundred Japanese troops busily defacing the imperial crest on their rifles outside of the provincial main building. So, there is no hard evidence that the style of defacement indicates whether it was done systematically by the Japanese or Americans or both. I think you could probably argue that the rough defacement was probably done in the field before surrender of the arm, while something a little more professionally done probably indicates an organized process. Hey, while you're here, an intact mum doesn't necessarily mean that it was a battlefield capture before the surrender of the Japanese. There were plenty of rifles waiting to be issued at the end of the war, and plenty of soldiers grabbed them as souvenirs, complete with intact mums. It's likely they were battlefield pickups, but there are no guarantees. Also, a defaced mum doesn't mean that the rifle was surrendered at the end of the war. When providing arms to other countries, as I mentioned previously, the Japanese also defaced or removed the mum since the rifle was no longer the property of the emperor. I think those rifles are generally Type 38 Arasakas. So yeah, at the end of the day, we can't really say much about the defacement of the mums to answer who did it and whether the style argues or proves who it was one way or another. It is yet another mystery from World War II, a process that likely involved a lot of people 
and yet no one has hard evidence to answer the question. At any rate, I hope you enjoyed today's video and found it both mildly entertaining and vaguely informative. If you own a Japanese war rifle, worry not about its mum, but rather just enjoy it for what it is. Take care and bye-bye.